law of attraction uh we did a master class on law of attraction uh lizanne was part of that um master class also is being recorded for people that uh, can't make it here so they can have a look at it uh, later as well i'll try to look at that camera at the same time as talking so um what we know about the law of attraction is that it's a law it's something that uh, is uh, in nature a law is something that humans identify uh, as being there uh, but it, it it's only by perception that we are aware of a law it's like saying for instance every time i leave the house and i forget to uh, uh, feed the cats then when i come home the cats are angry and you could call that the law of angry cats that would be a legitimate law right because you'd be like oh there we go yeah you know they say what's it uh, murphy's law right you heard of murphy's law right what can go wrong will go wrong and people are like ah oh, murphy's law but maybe it wasn't murphy's law maybe it was your sort of uh, assumptions based on a few things that you put together is murphy's law and some laws are useful and some laws are not so 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 take that uh, uh, law of attraction in that uh, um, in that way as a uh, with a pinch of salt well, there's some more people coming some late comers here um yeah uh take it with a pinch of salt oh we got uh, nice two more new late comers uh anisa and rashad two regulars so that's okay we'll we'll excuse you but if you were new you couldn't be late wouldn't be acceptable uh he's got the same name as me so he's allowed to be late hello rashad <laughs> how are you oh no sound so we can't hear you okay it's fine it's fine welcome i was watching the football oh, okay. oops oh, okay where's uh where's jamila she's not joining in a breathing session some oh. breathing thing <laughs> okay to get elevated surprise oh, me tell her we were just talking about that we were getting a kundalini teacher to show us how to do the breathing on here so she's missing out i had a very good one in russia once i recommend him to you <laughs> yeah me and me and him went to Russia together, two people with the same names, and uh, we, we did some breathing together in a cold bath, uh, very cold water. Uh, welcome, a Anissa. Hello, Anissa. Looking very sophisticated Hello. with Hello. your um, sunglasses. Sorry, I'm at the beach, so I, oh. I decided to join from here. <laughs> nice, nice, very nice. Welcome, welcome, and so really nice to see you. We were Likewise. just talking about um, people that were on the other, other class as well. So welcome. Um, and Andrea, nice to see you. Andrea? Andrea's frozen. Or something. Andrea's problem with the internet. Either way, we were talking about uh, the law of attraction, and it's not, it's not really a law, but it is a law uh, based on um, how you see it. Uh, the important thing to know is that there is something out there that you can harness to benefit you in your life, um, which most of us are looking for something in our lives that we don't have right now, which is either more money, better relationships, better health, uh, longer life, friendships, closing a business deal, getting a new job. Uh, and so then we have this concept of, uh, of, of the law of attraction, which is a which is a, a wonderful thing that people have discovered so the guy originally that spoke about the law of attraction was neville goddard neville goddard uh, wrote a book and he's he spoke about the main topic was the secret is the feeling the secret is the feeling the secret is the feeling that's the most important thing about the law of attraction is the secret is is, is the feeling and then later on we had uh, the famous uh, uh, think and grow rich with uh, napoleon hill who took many of the concepts uh, of that uh, from Neville Goddard and others. If you go back before that, we're talking about the Hermetica and the, and, 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 and the people of Egypt of that time who understood the sciences of uh, Hermeticism and even uh, um, mutating or alchemy, uh, different metals and minerals. So it's, it's definitely a science uh, taken from many different aspects. But the Egyptians, the, the Hermes, for instance, and, and the other ancient sages knew a lot about that. So it's a, it's a long tradition. In the Western world, it is made famous by Think, of, Think and Grow Rich with Napoleon Hill and then Tony Robbins and, um, and all the rest of the crew after that. Then the movie The Secret really came about and uh, spoke about it. So what is 
the law of attraction in essence? Does anybody know so we can make it a bit more interactive? What what is the law of attraction? In essence, in what you what you think it is, not what it actually is. Yeah, Carolyn, go ahead. Okay, what you think creates what you feel, creates what you manifest in your life. Okay. So your thoughts create feelings, yes, which create expectations maybe as well thoughts create expectations and feelings and they create, reality. they create reality yeah so so good anybody else uh the law of karma could say that you could say that priyakshi so some of you have been on the calls before where we spoke about quantum physics, which is a really fascinating topic and I know quite a lot about and I've been researching and understanding. So quantum physics, um, quantum particles, particles at the minor level, behave differently uh, than what we thought they would. In other words, if you have two particles in different places, in other words, say I'm a particle and RT is a particle. Right? And the, these particles are somehow linked across distance. Right? Einstein called this uh, spooky science uh, across, what is it called? Spooky? Spooky science. He actually called it spooky because it wasn't working and everything that he measured on a great scale wasn't working out. But he found that if you put two particles, they're somehow entangled. It's called the entang entanglement theory. If you say we call it heads or tails, Artie's heads, I'm tails. I turn and flip over to heads, RT automatically turns over to flip over to the opposite. Now, the, the quantum, quantum science was saying, but how is this possible? It's not even limited over, over, uh, over distance. So, and then they did this experiment, and I think they managed to do it over a few cities, I think from Belgium to London, where they shot a particle that far away and measured it. And as soon as they did something here, it changed instantaneously. So the world of, uh, of quantum is really interesting because it's the world beyond what we know as a rational mind. Because your rational mind says, it doesn't make sense. How can you get something that you just believe to be true and then you'll manifest that into your life? It can't be right. Because if you apply that to Newtonian science, cause and effect, if you, if you put money in the bank account, then you'll be rich. If you work really hard, then you'll be successful. If you look good, then you'll find a good partner. Terrible example in that particular way. Uh, but so then, but it doesn't work like that, right? Like you see a, a good-looking guy uh, uh, with a with a, with a funny-looking woman, and you say, "Oh, you know," people say that. You're like, "Oh, how did he end up with her? Or how did she end up with him?" People say that all the time, which of course is all um, it's it's judgment and bias. However, it doesn't work like that. Or you say, "How has that guy become rich? He does nothing all all day, you know, and he drinks coffee all day, like Rashad, my buddy here in Johannesburg. <laughs> he doesn't do anything, and you're like, but he shouldn't be rich." But he is somehow, right? <laughs> Any comments on that? <laughs> he doesn't know where to put his face. <laughs> Shade, welcome, welcome. Um, so, but then there's all these things that live in the world beyond rationality. The reason I have to explain that to you is that this is where we're going. If you want logical, rational thinking, then you can't change the way you see the world because the world is not rational. Science, modern day science has um, duped us into believing that if you can't see something, then it's not real. And some scientists, especially uh, old, old thinking scientists like uh, Rupert Sheldrake. Now, Rupert Sheldrake is a Christian scientist and he's done research on telepathy. So, so when you're sitting there going, oh, I wonder how my friend is doing in Germany. All of a sudden, the phone rings and you're like, how the, how the hell did that happen? I was just thinking about you, right? Or, you know, mom and daughter or mom and dad, or, or a child and, and parent, and one feels the pain of the other, one communicates with the other. Or you see couples in sync a lot, so you'd be like talking about something, and be like, oh, I was just thinking about that, right? It's like, how did that happen? Now, of course, science says, well, if I can't see it, then it's not real. So Rupert Sheldon went, went on board and said, let's measure this. Then there was a correlation between dogs and their owners, and the dog knowing whether the owner will come at a certain time or not. He's proven this scientifically. So he's basically making fun of the, of the rationalists and the materialists, right? So in the scientific community, there's a wonderful um, onslaught, I should say, of scientists who come from a traditional thinking background 
who are taking on conventional scientists and winning many of the time. So you have these people that um, see, see the world as, as Newton did, which is very useful at one time. Now you see these others that are coming on board that are really challenging the status quo because what we need is what we need because a lot of the times our problems that we have today is because of the over-reliance on scientists. Excuse me, Shade. Shade is here on the call. Shade is a scientist, a microbiologist for WHO. So, <laughs> But you can take that with a pinch of salt, I'm sure, Shade. Um, Shade, can you hear me? You're off camera. I hear you clearly. I okay. hear you clearly. You can slap me later then in that case. I think you have a punch of salt, not a pinch of salt. A punch of salt. <laughs> okay. Well, I owe you a punch because you haven't, you haven't been in touch for so long, but it's nice to see you anyway. Yeah. So John Wheeler, who was one of the greatest uh, quantum physicists, I think, of the 80s, he made the statement. He said that after all my research into science and the world of the quantum, I can say only one thing with a definitive answer. And I'm paraphrasing. He says that we live in a participatory universe. We live in a universe that is participatory. Now, what does that mean? That means what Caroline was talking about. What you think, what you feel, and how you behave, and how you react, and your expectations of the world is what it gives back to you. That's what This is what a scientist is saying. You know when you wake up in the morning and say, I hope I don't have a shit day, you end up having a shit day, right? When you wake up in the morning and you say, I can't wait to see what miracles and magic as all of you uh, have learned to say, uh, show up. They do show up. This is the direct proof of participatory universe. Synchronicity, right? You guys have all done a 21-day challenge. Now that your antennas are looking for what's working in the environment, things start working. So the other day, I don't know if you all know what bread, bread and butter pudding is. Bread and butter is a lovely pudding. You all know what bread and butter pudding is, right? Let's see. Maybe the Canadians don't know. Denise, you don't know what that is, right? Yeah, I had a feeling. Lizanne, you wouldn't know what that is. Do you know what that is, Lizanne? Bread and butter pudding? No. Okay. Ronald. So nice to see you, Ronald. Uh, so, one uh, uh, a couple. Ronald? Ronald? Ah, yeah. There you are. How are you, my friend? I'm doing terrific, Richard. Um, I logged in on my laptop, and I didn't notice that there was an option for ask to join. So now I'm logged in on my phone, and I saw it immediately. Okay. So here we are. Thank you. Welcome. It's really nice to see you. You have a lot of Good. fans here, Ronald. These are all your yes. fans. You all are beautiful people. Thank you so much for allowing me to join you. No, it's a pleasure having you here, Ronald. So, um, Ronald, I was just talking about uh, quantum physicists. Ronald also is a, a lover of Nikola Tesla and um, the other side of the equation that we don't hear too much about frequencies and the rest of it. And I was quoting John Wheeler, who says that we live in a participatory universe. And I was going on about that. So uh, my, uh, my wife made too much pudding and she said, look, I'm just going to go give some to the neighbors because we didn't finish it all. She went across to Auntie Norma and gave us some bread and butter pudding. So Norma this morning showed up and said, why did you come and bring me bread and butter and pudding that day? She says, well, we had extra bread and butter pudding. And so Norma says, it was exactly this day, 15 years ago, that my husband passed away. I went out with my daughter. She was feeling, I was feeling miserable and we had breakfast. Then I went out with my, my, my son to make myself feel better. And I was just lying in bed. And you showed up on this day that my husband passed away 15 years ago on the day and brought me bread and butter pudding. My wife was like, what's the big deal? She said, that's what his favorite dessert was. That's the only thing he loved. And he used to tell me to put more raisins in and everything. And so I walked, I was sitting over in the inside and I went outside and I said, oh, that's interesting, Norma. Isn't that amazing? How did that happen? So I said, you know, you know why we're making it is because your husband asked my wife to make it. And she says, and she like had goosebumps. She said, you know, uh, before he died, I said to him, listen, you got to find a way of communicating with me to tell me that, uh, that you're okay and that you still see me. And her husband said, this is rubbish. I just want to rest. I've had enough of you in a, in a joking way. And I said, well, it looks like your husband figured out that he can't send a message back to you. Now, you could say, well, that's all just coincidence, right? So his favorite um, uh, pudding on the anniversary or when, when he passed away. 
And so she was so touched and so excited about that, you know. So then she said, the last thing she said, I'm always looking for synchronicities. I said, well, then you're always going to find it. Right? 21-day challenge. We've seen it, guys. When we were looking for how the universe is working our favor, we were like, oh, the clocks were sinking. I remember Hayat from the previous one, she's like, this is freaky. It's like everything, all the guys, right? Anissa, uh, uh, Lizanne. And now that I think every, every one of you have done a 21-day challenge, you're like, oh, everything's in synchronicity. But wasn't it always there? We just didn't see it. Why? Because we're so stuck in our lives, right? So when you become a scientist, in other words, a new age scientist, which is just, I need the proof of life before I can make a judgment on it, then you tend to become very sad and very disheartened about life. I remember a friend of mine uh, about 10 years ago, I said to him, my life is over. I'm old now. And he was in his 60s. I said, I'm old now. I didn't make it in my career. I haven't become successful. I haven't achieved it. He looked at me and said, Rashad, you're a little baby. Shut up. I said, yeah, but look at my situation. I got no money. I got no job. This is, these are the facts. And he says, no, those are not the facts. This is how you're interpreting the facts. Right now is where you are, and that's going to change. And when you're in that situation, you don't see it. So, uh, any any thoughts or feelings? So I can take a break. Yeah, Aati. So talking about synchronicity, um, last Saturday I tested with um, uh, COVID, uh, positive COVID, right? Yeah. And we had decorators uh, starting in our flat um, on Tuesday. So I was like, oh goodness, might have to, you know, cancel them because I'm positive and all of that kind of thing. And then um, my un uncle and auntie were uh, going to South Africa on um, oh. Sunday to, to visit family you there. Chocolates for me, at least. Sorry? <laughs> oh yeah, I should have actually. They, they did come to Cape Town. I should have. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. um, Thanks, Auntie. And, we were uh, so I, I'm, I'm calling uh, them to say, you know, have a great trip. Say hello to family, and you know, and and she was like, oh, how are you? I was like, oh, this has just happened, and might have to postpone my decorators and she's just like look my house is going to be empty why don't you move in to what? to my space um and then you don't have to you know uh, call um, cancel the decorators <laughs> had i not called on that day um you know I, i'm sitting here in their home right now actually so you know just the way things worked out so now we've still got the decorators and they've, they've done their job there now um yeah. but yeah yeah just a little example of uh wow. yeah it's best wow. That's that's awesome. Anyone else? Denise, do you want to say something? Yeah, I, I find that it happens quite often to me. I, I'm watching TV and I'll say something to my daughter. I'll say something like, we could be saying hello. And right out, right out, the TV will say hello to me. Oh, well, wow. Well. And it happens like all the time. We just laugh all the time now. Because oh. I know ever since my, especially since my dad died, um, I think I'm just way more aware of the whole thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's been, it's pretty neat how that works. I love it. Yeah. It's, it's become quite, quite a game. If you, you know? be tuned into it, um, you get freaked out in, in the beginning. You'd be like, well, did I just create that? Or, you know, uh, but then, I mean, I use that with my, with my coaching, right? And I, I've been teaching my coaches how to tune in with the intuition. So we have uh, uh, two of them here, Lizanne and Maria who will be doing some uh, co-hosting in the future as well, um, about this, tuning in with the intuition. And people say, oh, I was just thinking that. Or, or you feel what, they, what they're actually going through rather than what their minds are saying. Because a lot of the time people talk about something, but they mean something else. And if you can pick up what they actually mean, you can solve their problem. It's like husband and wife fighting, right? Like, but you don't do the dishes and you don't do this. And you don't. You say, well, what is it really about? Is it about the dishes or is it something else? Now you don't even have to ask that because you're so aware, right? Ronald, one of your, uh, I think you you need to mute your, um, yeah, yeah, because there was a feedback. But we can see you in two screens. So, um, uh, okay, now the most important point that I want to um, mention to you, uh, and if you've got any more comments or thoughts, this has been my, you can say, my uh, my revelation lately and and uh, i was telling the coaches is that you're all my guinea pigs because i'm busy talking to you guys exploring further my clients 
to getting to know the secrets of the universe so that I can facilitate the change in all of you. So I learn, I watch, I understand, and the conversation that excites me the most is the nature of reality. Like, what is reality? So in other words, what's behind the matrix? And the more I tune in to that, that, that's what excites me. That's what I truly want. So if you say, do you want a Ferrari? Do you want, you know, uh, this, that, and the other? It's knowing the true nature of reality. Or my reality, I should say. Because everybody's reality is different. So having said that, there's something that I came across and I was sharing with the, with the group of the coaches last week about the nature of um, space and time. Newton's laws of cause and effect. Something must happen for something else to be the result of. I'm sure you guys know that we're not going into the third law of thermodynamics, we're keeping it simple. Uh, cause and action, cause and reaction. So something must have happened for something to happen except when it came to the quantum world and Newtonian law was getting thrown out because people didn't, they're like, but how could this, the, how could the universe be, uh, all these stars in the sky be kept up when there's actually nothing behind that? Like you, th there was no, if you go back to cause and effect, finally, you'd be like, well, what was the cause of the big bang? And you run out of options. Either way, the universe, if you apply cause and effect, then the law of attraction can't work, right? Because why can't it work? Because you have action, reaction. If I uh, put money into a bank account, uh, then I'll have a savings deposit and then I'll make money. If I take care of my, if I do 10 push-ups a day, then at the end of it, I'll be healthy, right? Or if you look on the negative side, if I spend all my money today, I'm going to be broke and I won't get any more money. Or if I lose my job, then I'll be uh, out on the streets. That's your conventional thinking. Like if I do, and, and it's a lot, very fear-based, right? If I make one wrong move, I'm finished, which is very destructive, right? Are you guys getting that? That's cause and effect, right? You get that. There's another exploration that I've been uh, exploring for a while, and many of you know about it, sacred geometry. Sacred geometry are these patterns that occur in nature, right? So you see... Um, at the top of your head as an example, you see as a child, the spiral pattern. You see the universe, the Milky Way, it's got a spiral pattern. You see in nature, these Fibonacci sequences, where uh, Fibonacci is not just in nature, it's everywhere, but there is a pattern that is being formed that people like Pythagoras and people with great insight, even people like Tesla, saw that things were not going linearly or sequentially. It wasn't one, two, three, four, five, six. There was this, you know, one, one, three, five, uh, eight, 13, the Fibonacci patterns. And everything in nature seems to be following these patterns, number one. Number two is that uh, self-similar. In other words, nature is self-similar. Nature goes to where it finds already what's there. Nature abhors a vacuum. These are all things that that not scientists, but people of vision have been observing how the universe works without coming with their own baggage. They said, oh, the moon's rising at this time and it's setting at that time. There seems to be a pattern. And so what people discovered that were of, of, of deep insight was self-similar pattern. In other words, if your, your brain is not a linear structure, it doesn't go, you say one plus one, it, it, so it's, you're thinking it's saying one plus one, two, so it's linear. It does not process like that. If you're thinking about something and you say, what will I have for dinner? Do you then go, well, parsley, uh, you know, uh, meat, chicken, or whatever it is. Why is it that your brain now is thinking about what you're going to do next weekend? Or why, you know, why, your why you don't like your husband anymore? Or why your child's giving you a hard time? Why is it jumping all over the place? What's this random nature? Like, what, you know, first day, like you're lying in bed trying to fall asleep and all of a sudden you're thinking about your ex, right? And you're like, why is this coming up now at this time? It's like, can't you stop thinking? The brain is a quantum machine. It processes and it looks at the world in a quantum way. If you look at how we see reality in a very limited way, in a Newtonian physics way, but our brains and our bodies are... Quantum. Quantum meaning that they follow the sacred geometry. Look at the double helix of the DNA strand. Look at 
I mean, you, there's thousands of stuff, right? You can look at music as well. You can look at 532. Ronald, this would all be right up your alley, right? Ronald, give me some more examples so that I can take a break of sacred Yes. Jokes. I was like, thinking about uh, 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 369. Six, nine, Tesla, six, nine. Yes, Tesla talked about that being uh, the numerical sec secret of the universe, uh, yeah. 369. And then you've got uh, Pythagoras', Pythagoras is perfect uh, rectangle. And they did the uh, Parthenon um, after his uh, geometry. Right. And um, also showed a, a beehive, if you can see it right. too well. Yeah. Remember I said I showed a beehive to a young girl, and she yeah. immediately saw the geometric patterns right. exactly. of the hive. Yeah. And um, the, it's, it's all mathematical. I mean, I, I, at the, I just imagine going into a pool hall and there are pool tables. And if you use Newton's theorems, you hit this ball, it's going to hit that ball, and it's going to hit another ball. But what if the balls had a mind of their own? And, and what if the balls could even communicate with the balls on another pool table? And they just reacted as if there was no human intervention. They, they just defied your intention it, but the imagination, we're, we're just limited to our cause or effect. When you talked about you having a meal. You say, okay, I'm going to have this meal. But our mind can go back into our so-called memories and think about what I had in the past, what I want to have today, what I'm going to have in the future. And you have all these associations, not being sequential, but being lateral, lateral and having depth. It's not like a matrix type of thing. Yep, matrix, precisely. And when you said quantum, I was thinking about how before they even talked about uh, quantum theory so popular, it was the, uh, the transistors. You take a small current can affect a large current, <laughs> like a lever, but having a minor change having quantum effects. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I've had my oh, cereals. I don't know share yeah, my coffee. No, no, it's perfect, Ronald. That, that came across beautifully. Thank you so much. It's, it's all of that. So starting with uh, Tesla's 369, something you can put into Google. You can just type in Tesla's 369 and you can see. Tesla was so superstitious that he used to walk around the building three times. He would only stay in a hotel room with the number three and it, it was his number. Uh, Ronald, you got to turn your mic off, please. Are, are you in, uh, well, he's probably getting a coffee. He said he needed his coffee. So he's probably going to get a coffee. So let's, let's go off the law of attraction and self-similar patterns. Nature does not like a vacuum. Nature likes to put something there all the time. Why this applies is that if you think you're going to run out of supplies, run out of money, run out of love, run out of that, it's not how nature operates. So you're not going to run out based on observing nature. The other thing you'll observe is that nature... Where something is, another thing grows. Have you looked at mold? Right? There was no mold there in the beginning. And then some mold grew. And then more mold grew. You find a bee being attracted to a flower. More being attracted. There, there is this self-attraction, self-similar patterning that's happening. How does this apply in short answer to what we're talking about here? Is that if you have a thought that is imbued or embodied with I... Am, I am, not I want to be. I am successful. That one thought implanted a seed. Then in the day you say, and I follow this up with another technique called affirmations, and you say, why am I so successful? You see? See what I'm doing there? I'm asking a question of something that I don't believe I am. I'm starting to create a new discourse. Internally. Thought level. So, what I'm doing is simply planting seeds that will start growing flowers that will create trees. If you can get this in this concept, then the law of attraction, and there's not many people doing it like this, but I can guarantee you, based on my observation of nature, this is how nature works. And it worked in my life and worked in many other people's lives as well. You plant the thought. If you guys seen Inception, the movie Inception, brilliant movie, you haven't seen it, you should. A dream within a dream within a dream. You plant a thought or a belief strong enough, you can't see it now, but you've already implanted a root growing. 
And it's only much later that you see it sprouting through the ground. So that means you plan to believe that I am very successful, if that is what you want. And you start watering that. What does it mean to water it? It means that by using self-talk and say, why am I so successful? How would a successful person walk, behave, and all the rest of it? The secret is, the, is in the feeling. Remember, never Goddard's word. So then you become as if though you are that person all the time, not as the previous version. And you can't see the results in the, in, in the known universe because that's Newton law, right? It's like, if you can't see it, it's not there. What happens if it's on its way? What happens if it wasn't, like Ronald said, your hand that hitting the, 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 the balls on a snooker table, but that the balls had an instinctive, intuitive knowledge. And, and, and scientists, not scientists, but people of, of perception and depth have been observing something that the ancients knew about, that everything is related to everything else. Even though it seems that's a cucumber and that's a banana, they, they come from a similar patterning. Even a human being to a fly. There's, there's relations. Now when you look at the DNA level, they're finding we're not that much further away from, uh, from that. But, but it goes well beyond that. In other words, plant a seed, water it with your thoughts and emotions. Wait till it grows. And the moment you see the first sprouting, the seedling appearing from under the soil, you become overwhelmed and excited. At that stage, you become super committed to watering that flower, right? If you guys ever planted something in your backyard, planted the seed, and you're just watering, there's no enthusiasm, right? You're like, I don't know if it's going to grow or not. As soon as you see that sprout, you're like, oh, it works. Like there's something. Now every day you're like, sorry, I've got to go water the flowers until it becomes your coriander. I remember I was doing that with the coriander in my garden. And next thing you know, I had like, Tons of coriander. I think you guys call it cilantro in the, in the U.S. Is that? It's, it's the same thing. So now, the secret is to keep watering it before you see it. This is where people lose hope. This is where people give up. It's because they can't see it. Because their brains are old thinking. Not, not old, old. Because the old people knew this. The very old people knew this. If, you, if you've ever been to a Chinese place or an Indian dealer or retailer you go there and they'll say they want to close the first deal if you go to a market in like a chinese place or an indian place or something Rashad, you entered at the right time as you came back to join us so uh, so they would close that first deal Rashad, you agree he goes to turkey a lot right in turkey the first deal is really important they need that first deal why is that i remember going to a place and the chinese guy were talking about something in the market and i said you know, make it cheaper. He said, how much you want to pay? And I said, like $2. He's like, but well, it's $10, right? <laughs> uh, Russell, Russell Peters, your fellow Canadian, Denise, he's hilarious when he talks about the Chinese. He's really funny. So $2, right? So, so you go in there, he'll say, all right, done. I'll take $2. And you're like, wow, how did I get such a good deal? It's because you're the first customer. And then you get, they put these little uh, cats with the hand. Have <laughs> you seen them in the little Chinese shops with the cats with the hand? Because it's good luck. It's creating energy. They know this. It's not stupid. There's so much wisdom in it. But us growing up, people, oh, well, I don't see it. There's no bacteria. There's no virus. There's no, you know, you've got your positive. That means your life is over or whatever it is, right? It, it's not like that. Okay. You, the energy that you attract starts creating more of it. So the moment you put, my father taught me, the moment you put that first note in the, in the till, more money is going to follow. You got to close that deal, whatever it takes. So even a guy you walk in and, and you know you, you got a shirt that's forty rand, you go, I'll sell it for ten rand. Just get it in there. That how does that apply to you in your life? Plant a seed of a thought, then keep watering it and keep sustaining it, right? And the more thoughts that you apply to that, the, the quickly it grows. The more seeds get planted, and the more quickly you realize your um, your dream or what it is that you want to. And in the meantime. You've got to come up with positive uh, reframing until you see the seed come out of the ground. Otherwise, you get disheartened. You do that very easily when you plant something in the backyard, but you guys don't do that, and we don't do that in our lives. When we plant a seed, and it's been like three, day, three days or five days, you're like, oh, the seed hasn't come up yet. Oh, I'm sure if I keep on watering it, it's going to come up. We don't stress over it. We don't like curse God 
We don't swear at the neighbors because we still don't have that thing that we wanted. Right? But when it's our personal life, like, ah, oh, this is not working. I'm just giving up. Right? But you do that with the, with, with the, with the seed. You've got to do that in your lives and say it's coming. Right? And if it doesn't come up, then what do you say? Just say the seed doesn't come up in the ground. What do you say? What's your usual dialogue when it comes up? Plant the seed. You've, you're giving it all the water. All the nutrients are there. But it just doesn't come. So what do you say to that? What do you, Mike, put on? Plant, plant some more seeds, other seeds. Yeah, but what or, would you or say? Or try and keep nurturing those ones. Yeah, but why hasn't it grown? What would be your answer? Or oh, reasonable, anything that you could conclude to it. Maybe uh, uh, shifting a perspective around it, seeing a different way of going about it, taking a different type of action. Yeah, but what could you, yeah, those are remedial actions, but what could have happened? So in other words, those are the things that you're going to do next. But so, so the first step would be to diagnose the situation. You'd say something like, uh, well, maybe it's not the right sunlight. Then you would do what you're saying as a second part. Okay, let me change the sunlight, for instance. So we come up with very logical reasons. We don't stress over it. But when it comes to us, when it comes to relationship, health, there's a great energy that puts towards that that stops it from happening so 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 you say for instance you say well i manifested that you know i would have a, a gold pair of sneakers by the end of the month and it hasn't appeared and we get frustrated and we get angry and all the rest of it you know you say well maybe it's just i need to change this and i need to change that and apply a different kind of formula you keep on going or maybe it wasn't meant to be right now but you don't give up it's, it's one of the things that us as humans we very quickly give up and we're like ah it's not meant for me. It doesn't happen for me. And that's when you need to go get proofs of it happening. By looking at, you look at YouTube videos. Lizanne, the lady that we mentioned the, on the call, what was her name? The one that's always talking about this? Abraham. Sorry, I got it. Yeah. Abraham Hicks, right? So she's wonderful, right? Or oh, he's wonderful. It's wonderful. So I think they were the gender, they were ahead of the gender game there, right? Because they've been around from the 70s or something like that. And they just like, so they say this thing. I say, I don't know how, I don't know why, but everything seems to be working out in my favor. And so somebody comes up to you and says, but how can you just say that? Well, I don't know, but it just seems that everything seems to be working in my favor. Well, do you have any proof? No, I don't need any proof, but I just see it. I don't know how, and I don't know why. It's all just working out in my favor. You see, it's not logical, but it works, right? So then you ask them, how are you feeling? I feel amazing. Why do you feel amazing? Everything's just working out for me. Oh, but you didn't get your new shoes. Yeah, because I wasn't meant to. And because things are working out for me, I'll get it later. You see, it's, it, it just, you're just messing with, with your mind to, to live a more fruitful life. Right? And, and what happens by that, and you've done the 21-day challenge, when you're using the right mantras and you're using the right affirmations, you actually start seeing it happening. So you're creating reality, and reality is creating you. You're participating, as John Wheeler says, in the universe. So practical examples. Does anybody show me a practical example of how that would be used or that you've understood it so that I know you've gained something from it? I, I, I can just uh, share that um, one, day I went to a uni one day I went to a university yeah. to take a service call. Yeah. And I talked with um, the customer there, and several months later, I led a seminar to students. Yeah. I had no idea that was going to happen when I first um, showed up. I was just there to fix a machine. Yeah. But it happened in such a way, just from conversation, that he needed someone to lead a seminar on raspberry pies, oh. and I offered my services to graduate and undergraduate students. His lab was filled with students and raspberry pies that I'd brought, and we gave a seminar that night. And that led to further teachings and eventually a class offered by the university. I had no idea that was going to happen when I first appeared, but it just evolved. Right, right. So so you, you just, you, 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 it's this wonderful thing that says your job is to dress up and show up. The universe will take care of the rest. 
That's it exactly. Yeah. Ronald says, oh, okay, well, I'm going to do this. Your job is not to go figure out the how. Your job is to implant the seed, I want this, and then tell the universe the feeling of what you want to create. Most of the times, thank you, Ronald, for sharing that. Most of the time, what stops us is self-sabotage, not feeling worthy. This is such a big thing. This is at the beginning of all of it. We want this thing, but we don't truly want it. Right? Yeah, do you want to be rich? Yeah, but I don't like rich people. Do you want to be fit? Yeah, but it's not. It's overrated. Do you want to be on a holiday? I wouldn't mind it. Like, how much do you want it? We've lost the enthusiasm because we don't believe we're really worth it. Because upbringing, conditioning, environment, we didn't have those opportunities to be like, how can I ever get that? How can I ever do that? And that's why you see people from poor neighborhoods or you know limited um, resource availability end up where they end up. And then those rare few, you'd be like, oh yeah, you know, he was in Harlem and now he's on the on the news because he broke free, uh, you know, from these uh, things. But what about the rest of the people in Harlem? Why do they need to be, why does he need to be an anomaly? Why is it that people in the Hamptons, using all American examples here, are generally successful, right? He'd probably be on the news because he was a failure and he came from the Hamptons. So you can definitely tell the conditioning and the environment and how you're raised to, 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 to feel affects you. So your job is more difficult then, right? You've got to try harder. You've got to put in more effort. Yes, Ronald. I should say that I had a morbid fear of that particular university. And I oh. had a fear of the students, but my purpose at that time overcame the fear. And it's right. like I walked into a different dimension when I did what had to be done. I could not tell you in words how everything happened, but it was just a walk of faith. Wow, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. There's so much more to talk about and show you when it comes to law of attraction and manifesting that you want. This is an uh, introduction call, although we dived pretty deeply into it. Just to, um, to conclude, um, and then open up if you've got any questions, is that you have to get beyond your rational mind. Why is that? Because your rational mind is linear. It thinks, your brain isn't, but your mind, you, you, how you see the world. You, we've been taught to see the world this way. It doesn't mean that's how the world is. So our rational mind, uh, from conditioning and from people like Newton and other people, by the way, Newton did amazing things. We wouldn't have been having this conversation if it wasn't for Newton. So let's not write him off as you know some kind of devil, not by any means. Um, of course, and he would, if he was a real scientist, he would say, well, later on, I'm hoping that other people will improve on my theories and come up with new ones. So having said that, if we look at the world from this level that some scientists still today refuse to let go of, okay, if we move beyond that, then the, that's rational thinking. So in other words, well, I have to do that for that to happen. Now, non-rational thing is that maybe if I just have the feeling and work towards that, can that somehow amplify the feeling of it happening? In other words, is it all about, how, like in other words, it, you'll only get rich if you work hard. You'll only be successful if you work your ass off, right? Those are the old ways of thinking. Not old, but uh, limited view of thinking. Or, you know what, you can never cure your illness, you're finished. Anissa, you mentioned about the thing on the group that I posted about um, Joe Dispenza, this woman that had a skin disease. She went to all the best uh, clinics and therapists and couldn't cure it. She went into one of these meditations, deep meditations, where she believed so truly beyond the rational mind that she's cured, that she can cure, that she's a healer, right? Miraculous healing. You hear it all over the place. And a couple of days later, the skin disease that she had was overtaking her whole body, is gone. Now, this is getting so exciting that some of the traditional thinkers are getting frightened by this because the evidence is getting pretty substantial. When you get out of your rational mind, psychedelics, Denise, you know what I'm talking about, right? When you start get out, getting out of your rational, limited, conditioned mind, and you say, I can do anything I want to as a child. You mean... You mean I can do that? Yes, you can. And then you program your mind and you become that thought and you start manifesting that. I mean, we don't, it's, there's so many examples. And, you know, I had to go research that because I came from a logical, conditioned Newtonian mind. I went on to YouTube, saw things, and then I started seeing things in my life that was like, oh my God. Like I said, COVID was the best thing that ever happened to me. That was the best thing. We wouldn't be having this conversation. This is what I did in COVID. I went anti-logic. 
They said, well, how are you going to pay your bills in, in COVID? Where are you going to get clients? You can't be doing this now. Your whole business is face-to-face. -face. Andrea, Anissa, you can relate to that as coaches as well. And I read this thing, and he said, the only thing you can do during COVID is to give so much it hurts. Go give so much it hurts. And I said, this guy's so impractical, but I like him because everything in rationalism makes sense. He said, open your heart up, and whatever you can give, go and give. Right? And out of that came these group calls, came the 21-day challenge, and came tremendous success in my coaching, including the London trip, Ati, right? and Miriam, and Maria, and uh, uh, Caroline. So, um, yeah, all of these things happen, and you guys are proof to that. It's all a miracle. Honestly, it's a miracle. Now, I can talk about my life, but if you look closely at your life, every part of your life has been an absolute miracle. And if you can't see that, then you're really looking from a conditioned, re redundant point of view. Because just your chances of being born is, I don't know, the statistics are like one in 600 million, right, of that sperm you know, getting into that uh, uh, egg and then you appearing out of that and you surviving that process. So you've been a miracle all along. Uh, and, and the more you amplify that feeling of wholeness, of oneness, of bliss, how many times have you sat there going, oh my God, my life is magnificent. Like, how could I ever, what most people do is they say, I don't deserve this. Very dangerous talk, by the way. I don't deserve such a good life. Don't talk like that. Okay, you do, because you are the universe. So then you say, I'm so grateful, because I'm entitled to this, right? And you sit in that feeling, and they've measured it on the scanners now, with brain scans. Your body, your brain becomes coherent. It starts firing. Everything just starts forming. Healing starts happening. You start feeling more clarity. You start focusing on work. Denise, you talk about Kundalini, right? When you open up the heart chakra, you start falling in love. You start feeling these moments of bliss. You're sitting, Denise, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I just saw Sylvia's online. You can ask her. Oh, she is online. Oh, yeah. welcome, Sylvia. I thought I saw her come on. Yeah, she is. She's on the, maybe she's, maybe she drinks some breathing as we speak. <laughs> come on, Sylvia, where are you? Maybe Sylvia is doing breathing with Jamila, Rashad. Because Sylvia, Sylvia has a Kundalini uh, yoga instructor. It must be like synchronicity, you see? It could be happening. There. That she's not talking. Maybe she can't. Hello, hello. Yes, there hello. Oh, I am here. Oh, it's my first time using this app. Yeah, I'm yeah. just getting familiar with it. The, pain in the ass. You, but uh, yes, yes. This has been a very uh, enjoyable experience, everybody. And uh, Rashad, I, I, my mind is just like little like fireworks going off, like everything's, uh, uh, you know, connecting and everything's like all this, you know, as I have a math background, so you're just speaking oh, oh. to oh, to uh, to me yes. and with all your Fibonacci numbers and my, oh, um, and all these patterns and I'm a person of pattern and recognition and I see all that stuff too. And it's, and you're to affirm, yes, you know, we, when we see something growing out of the ground, right? we can see the little seedlings pop their head through the earth. We, we get excited. Right. And so, mm -hmm. but it takes, it's, uh, it's that lot, it's that emotional mind of us wanting to continue being that believer in things that matters so much. Mm -hmm. And then going, speaking to the chakras, right. It's opening up and aligning all the chakras through breathing and, and techniques that, um, gets rid of the blockages and those limiting beliefs that and those that old programming and that um, that that those patterns, you know, the the educational system that we're all brought up in. It's right, it's right. it trains us to be very um, sequential. One plus one, like you're saying, is two. You know, yeah, from the, yeah, right? Yeah. And versus versus exponential. But you know, was uh, you know, then the kids always ask, why are we studying math? You know, what's the purpose of math? Because eventually you learn that things are exponential and they have the ability to, you know, like three, six, nine, twelve, so on. Like it things right. don't always Growing happen in a linear Yeah, it's like yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was just telling them about how I was so tired and I did your your class the other night. And how it, it just opening everything up again, it just really worked with the Kundalini. So if you want to post one of your little 
clips on the group would be great. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. You can uh, you can add it to the group or you can post it to us on the group. And Sylvia, you're welcome to join the group. Sylvia, just to uh, well, you were still you were still talking. Is there something else you want to say? Because I'm loving what you're saying. Thank you. Yes, um, I I literally just rolled out of bed. Otherwise, I would show my face too. Um, <laughs> I was in I was sure. in Toronto yesterday for my father's birthday. And got home really late. It was like just yeah. uh, um, so. But and I'm sorry for coming on late. And I'm thankful that I that Denise woke me up. She's like, "Come on, Sylvia, get on here." Her thoughts literally got me out of bed. So thank you, I'm Denise. Right. Um, and um, oh, me out of bed. You see, there we go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the you know we we don't even recognize how strong that energy is when somebody thinks about us. It happens, right? Uh, that's it. That's it for me. Please continue. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I just want to say uh, thank you for that wonderful input. I'm so glad that you come from those backgrounds. So, you know, when you are on a mushroom trip or an ayahuasca trip or when you have a kundalini awakening experience or when you, in the Chinese uh, philosophy as well, there is this alignment with the various centers, not, not just chakras. What's happening internally is the chakras. All these uh, after near-death experiences, they all have something in common. The sacred patterns that you observe in these states, these colors, these shapes, everything that we're talking about, you will see. That is what I spoke about, what my great excitement and interest is, the nature of reality. So if I can, and you can deduce based on your observation, these amazing things without even you needing to take that. Of course, when you take them, for instance, uh, the Doors of Perception, Aldous Huxley, right? Huxley, his works have been foundational, and he wrote this book that nobody likes to talk about as well, right? Which is um, uh, th these coming times of these uh, dystopian uh, uh, times. What was it called? Um, uh, uh, a new, a new world. What was it called? Aldous Huxley's famous book. I can't think of it right now, but a brave new world. A brave new world spoke in detail about the technological revolution and how we're all going to become programs, right? And in that, he speaks about all these things. Either way, he ended up becoming one of the pioneers. And in fact, it was, I think, CIA or one of these uh, American organizations that said they wanted to try LSD. And he, 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 he volunteered to write a book and Doors of Perception was written about that. All of these writers, poets, artists, musicians, Right, Maria, we've been exploring a lot on these patterns, these frequencies. They all line up. And then if you look at Raymond Reif, who came up with the Reif machine, uh, works of Tesla, right? There are frequencies in your body. And there's a frequency for cancer. And there's a frequency for healing. Apparently, there's been, he's been totally sidelined by med medical, uh, by new age scientists, right? But apparently, there was not one of the ailments that he came in that he couldn't cure. He'd find the frequency for it, give the healing frequency for it, and it would be cured using this machine called the Rife machine, right? All this stuff out there that's taken me years to explore and got me wide-eyed, you know? So I'm so lucky that I get to do this for a living, right? And you see how different schools, thoughts, traditions, breathing techniques, all align. Joe Dispenza uses something that Kundalini teaches as well to moving the energy up the spine. And when it reaches that sacred chakra on the top and all of them open up you get this awakening experience so we see nature to have these self-similar repeating patterns the holographic universe which is a concept which is wonderful that shows that what is contained in one molecule of water is contained across the entire spectrum of the universe so one every cell is a copy of everything else in the universe we can't get our minds around it because we're thinking of a hard drive right Till today, they don't know where memories are stored. It's this incredible thing where you're sitting here, I wonder what I did last week. Where did you get that information from? Where is it? Because it's not in here. And what in you is accessing it to make those words come out? It's a pure miracle. People don't get it. Because on the hard disk, you go, okay, well, you type a binary code. It goes into a hard disk magnetic strip, reads out there. The head comes out, takes the information, sends it back, and then types out and goes, well, it's file A. But in this thing here, nobody knows. It's fascinating. So we will go on to the world that uh, is not visible or not spoken about. And I'm excited to bring that to you in the future. And I'm aware of you guys' time as well. 
Uh, and thank you for all the energy of uh, all of you uh, coming on the call because it contributed in a major way to what came out of today's call and I really enjoyed it. Uh, Coach, I would like to share my today's meditation experience. Yeah, uh, your what? What meditation experience? Uh, I meditate every day as uh, oh, you right. remember I, I have done Vipassana and all that. So morning time usually I do half an hour or one hour meditation every day. So yesterday as I was not well, I was not able to sleep properly and a lot of thoughts were there regarding my health and all that. My mind was totally cluttered like uh, running here and there. I could not sleep. I got up at 4.30 or uh, almost 4.15. And then I said, well, let me sit and just meditate. Every day I put some uh, Vipassana app in which the bell rings every five minutes. But today I said, no, I'll do it without any app. And I just said, I took, uh, I started on 4.26 in the morning. And it almost took me 20, 25 minutes to st uh, still my mind because a lot of thoughts were there. And uh, my body... Uh, usually when I meditate, it starts vibrating in a pendulum form, either uh, to and fro or and round, round, round. And I get scared, so I stop that. But today I said, let me, let it be like what it uh, shows me. And uh, I just let my body uh, keep on vibrating. It started vibrating, vibrating. First it was to and fro and then it round. And then I felt as if a cord was building up right from my Kundalini Chakra to my crown chakra with a white color uh, uh, rope something. I was getting tied fully and then all my energy was aligning and then it came up and it was like a shower, white and brown color. And then like, you know, I cannot explain what I felt, but it was something very relaxing, like something came out uh, some resistance and i don't know what it was but it was so relaxing and then uh, i opened my eyes it was exactly 526 525 one hour exactly 525 526 exactly one hour i took and then i went to sleep and then i got up and i felt like internally i felt so happy but my body was very weak because of the health uh, the thing but my mind and my heart was so calm so at peace like uh, out of like very different experiences in so one year the way I'm meditating this was very different today I felt I'll share with you guys today I don't know what it was but it was something very different actually that we could talk about for uh, quite a while because it's very similar to a Kundalini experience that you had but we out of time now but thank you for sharing that with us Guys, we will we'll leave it here because I know a lot of people have to um, get going as well. Um, thank you all for coming. And uh, we will continue this uh, either next week or the week after. So stay tuned. And if you know people that are interested in learning more about them, then share the uh, tools and techniques. Uh, be a, a recording of this as well that you can go and um, revisit in case you missed some of it as well. So um, if there's nothing else, then we're going to stop it here, Arti, and we'll do a... Uh, meditation the next time when we uh, get on the call. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rashad, for allowing me yeah. to be here with everyone. Thank you, Ronald, for joining us. All of you, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.